Hi, it's Rob Redding, America's Independent Voice, and this is Redding News Review on Restricted's podcast. Stand by everything I said on yesterday's show. I do. Even though we find out today things that should have been brought out during the trial and things that further enlighten us about these damn hugs, these hugs that we see for this woman, this blonde-haired woman, appearing blonde as this emailer here says, she's not blonde. She actually had darker hair, Rob. She dyed her hair for this proceeding. I'm glad he pointed that out. That's good stuff. What you have here is something that's really disconcerting. And it's disconcerting on a number of ways. Again, it shows you, it illustrates, or at least it appears to illustrate something I said before I started the clip. And I don't want to lose that. So like I said, I'm going I'm to kind of slow down here because I'm not in a hurry. Number one. It tells us that this is the way black people behave in the United States now and that we are willing to forgive people for heinous crimes against us even though they don't get enough time, which is a whole other issue. This woman, let me just say it for the record, is is, as a small detour, is not getting enough time. She should be getting the maximum of 99 years. What is a black life worth? What is a black life worth? Tell me what it's worth because it's not worth just 10 years, according to this court. All right, and people are boohooing. A a man is dead, and this woman gets ten years for it. Had it been the other way around, and this black man killed a white woman, these police officers would be one to throw the book at his ass, and he would never see the light of day again. I could tell you that in this country and the way it's designed. All right. So what's interesting is that this is the narrative that emerges from the Jean case that oh we want to play this up of course the police say in the clip we want to play this up we want to play up the fact that this young 18 year old boy is now hugging the you know the convicted killer of his brother but again what we're seeing are island people who have come here who have immigrated here who have a different view of what America is all about than you or I have. See, my father's father's father was a slave. And my grandfather was just out of slavery when he had my father. And my father remembers and tells me stories about how black folks couldn't go where white folks were eating and how black folks couldn't go in the front door and how they had to go into the back door and how black boys and girls didn't have textbooks that white boys and girls had and my father could barely read when he started out as a young man in his 20s and my mother told me about how difficult it was for her to get an education and how her books were subpar and how she struggled through college and how she got a track scholarship and she turned it down because it wasn't enough money and how she became a an educator one of the best in the Atlanta public school system see I want you to understand that that post-slavery trauma as I call it in my book not a nonviolent Negro was handed down to me see that wasn't handed down to a person coming to this country from another country because that person coming to this country from another country has a different view see they came they chose to come to this country they chose to be a part of this racial hatred this racial system they chose that this was better than the place that they're coming from you can't tell me that this is the same thing. It's not the same thing. You can't tell me that this is the way we should behave because it's not the way we should behave. See, there are a lot of people who have said, oh, this is just Stockholm Syndrome, that this is just a mental illness that black folks have. Yeah, it's that too. It is a mental illness because even in the islands, there's a history of black folks and white folks not getting along, that black folks were brought there as slaves and they were they were brought to that area and they have their own racial history with white folks but what they don't have many of them is the history of 400 years of slavery and oppression that we had in this country what they don't have is the segregation that we had in this country for 
just a few years now we've been free of it for about 50 years what they don't have is those things and what is interesting is that you see this being held up as a standard again which I tell you that it's not number two is I'd say that you know what it's not even you know quite Stockholm syndrome although that would be an oversimplification here I mean we can make a, a case that this is Stockholm syndrome by simply looking at the fact that you know these folks heard in open court at least three instances of this woman being a racist now listen to this three instances where this woman said I can't wait for this MLK event to be over soon enough all right this this clip covers some of it but this is the three instances that the text messages cover I can't wait for this MLK thing to be over soon enough because she's asked when is it ending she says when MLK you know dies and you know when he when when he when he's dead making an MLK joke about MLK's death on MLK day is not a good look if you're a white woman this wasn't introduced during the normal court proceeding this came out in the sentencing yesterday because I made a comment and I still told you I stand by yesterday's show this woman wasn't a card carrying member of the Klan and if you're hoping that white folks have an epiphany because they're not going to now especially with black folks seemingly so accepting of what she's done in the family and the judge which we'll get to the judge in a moment but what's interesting is you're not gonna have white folks saying you know what we're really racist and this woman was really a racist and this is what's really going on and this is really about racism you're not gonna have that in this case because they believe that racism is a hoax which goes to yesterday's show it's a hoax okay and then going back before yesterday's show they also believe that even if it is not a hoax that you're not as good as they are and that goes back to what dr lewis gordon said about you know what you're not human and you say yes i am i'm just like you all right so just tying it all in then you have a situation where the second text message comes in where she says that she's surrounded by black officers and she says i'm not a racist but I, I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm so confused. What she's getting at here. Does she view her being around these black people as being a problem? She's around fellow black officers. But she says she's not a racist, but I'm, I'm confused. One of the things about the second is that is that thing that Dr. Lewis Gordon talked about. I don't want to miss this. The thing that Dr. Lewis, Lewis Gordon talks about is what I just said. Is that black folks are subhuman so what does she mean about being in the company of black officers what she's saying is is that we're subhuman it's important that you understand what's going on here because what dr lewis gordon is saying is this he's saying that you know there are black people that say no i'm human i'm just like you what's wrong with being around me these black officers probably are now saying what's wrong with being i'm just like you but do you want to really be just like a racist then the second instance again is dr lewis gordon says is what no i am actually human and you're not so then you have to ask yourself do i have any psychological trauma any psychological issues that preclude me from being the perfect human and the perfect example of being a human that's a tall order and then finally you create your new weight so that's important because that has application practical application here and then finally you have the example that's given in the clip and that is the example that she said that she knows a dog is racist she is the same way that's what she says about the dog that lets you know she sees herself as a racist she sees herself as a stereotypical as dr lewis gordon says a person that believes themselves to be better than you because of the color of their skin that you are subhuman and that they're better than you now i i like painting racism in that way because most racists don't like to have the conversation about being racist nobody wants to be a racist nobody you you can't get you can't hardly get anybody that says you know what i'm a racist most people don't do that but this woman actually does she says that she is a racist she says that that's who she is so if we accept what we see in court these hugs 
from the family, the brother, and also the non-family member, the judge. If we accept those things on their face, then we have some real issues. And that goes to the mental issues that we have been talking about as a result of racism with Dr. Lewis Gordon and what I talked about about the hoaxes yesterday and what we see as Stockholm Syndrome today where you start thinking of your oppressor in a favorable light because that's just what captives and people who are oppressed for a long period of time might do. Now, I don't know where this judge is from, and we're going to get to the judge in a moment. I know I keep saying that, but we do know a lot about this family. We do know a lot about their background. We do know that they came to this country looking for a better life. And so I don't use them as an example. I cannot use them as an example. I can only use them as an outlier when it comes to how black folks deal with this type of trauma. I don't even think you can use religious examples here and say that they're the same thing. But I will be very cautious to say that a lot of black folks are still very religious. And this is the thought of a lot of black people. I think it's easy to conflate that with Stockholm Syndrome. And that's not the same thing. Okay? Black folks in South Carolina that were in that church that might have survived, that had family members in that church, they're Christians. And that is what a Christian is supposed to do. Or the Amish having an issue, that's their religion. That's who they are. That's what they're supposed to do. This is what many black people for years have done. Now, if you're not religious and you do this, that is Stockholm Syndrome. Now, to the point of this judge, where she gives the Bible to this woman and then prays with her and hugs her. That lets you know right there she's a what? She's a Christian. See, that lets you know how she's brought up. So that is very much in the line of what happens in South Carolina, etc. And I know some of you are yelling at me and you're saying, Rob, that's Stockholm Syndrome. But before we get there, before we get there, I want to dissect, see, see I want to just take my time here. I want to dissect this woman just a little bit. This judge decides to give a Bible, her Bible, to this white woman who has already in open court proved that she at sentencing is a racist. Okay? Proved that she does not like black people. Now, why she's crying, I have no idea. Why she didn't get a, 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 a tougher sentence, we all know it's because of the color of her skin and the way the system works. So, whether this is Stockholm Syndrome is anybody's guess. I'm not a psychotherapist. I cannot say this, but I can say this concretely. That this hug is inappropriate. I've read about it. I've seen it. The reason why it's inappropriate is because this woman will appeal. And when she does appeal... This judge will have to hear said appeal, or she'll have to punt to another judge. Maybe she'll have to punt, punt to a white judge who might be more favorable to this white woman. God forbid. This white woman only got 10 years for killing this black man. Because that's how their system, our system of justice, is rigged. Not only that, but you already have on record... That the family member says in open court, I don't want to see you go to jail. The judge, again, restating, hugged said defendant. And it goes to a white judge in the future. This woman's going to get off with this damn crime. That's what, after just 10 years, maybe she serves a year, maybe she spends a year and a half of her life appealing She's going to get off, and she's going to get out, and she's going, to, and at parole, at her first parole hearing, more likely than not, she's going to get out, you know, when she gets probation, a probation hearing. At the end of the day, none of this looks good. And why does it happen? It's because some people say, Stockholm Syndrome, Rob, you're missing it. That's what I believe applies here. Maybe so. But I'm not a psychotherapist. I can only provide context to what I see in front of us and what we know. 
this woman is a Christian, she says. All right, she gives her the Bible, she prays with her, she hugs her. That's in the same light of what happened in South Carolina. These folks who are the family of John, they are what? They are from the islands. Their view is very different than your and my view. It's an oversimplification just to say that it's Stockholm, but it could be. It definitely could be just that, because there's a lot of them step and fetch it Negroes out there who believe that Massa, we sick, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to taking me home. Massa, we sick? Nah, bitch. I'm s sick. We're not sick. We're not the same. Remember, you're an ape. You're subhuman. You're not... You are not the same as me. And that's what Dr. Lewis Gordon would remind you of. But there's some black folks, there's some black folks that are so sick, and maybe these are some of them that are so sick mentally that they equate white suffering with their own and they want to do anything to stop white suffering even when it checks their own suffering. Maybe Jean's brother is one of those people. Maybe this judge is one of those people. Maybe all of those people in South Carolina and those Amish people, maybe even included, might be those people. But again, what I tell you is this. I don't want to pathologize us too much as black folks, but I want to contextualize this moment that's being propagated as if it applies to all black people. It doesn't. First of all, all black people are not diehard Christians. All of us are not going to turn the other cheek because I'm not. I'm not a nonviolent Negro. I stay with my foot in white folks' asses when it's needed. I am very much one of those people that believes that violence solves issues. I am very much one of those people that believe that there should be accountability in this case that she got off too light for this crime. I am one of those people that exist among many black folks that believe that we need to be proactive about our issues and more nationalistic as it relates to our issues. That's who I am as an individual. And then secondly, I'm not an immigrant, okay? And neither are many of you. You know, there are people that would say that black folks that are here are immigrants. We're not immigrants. We did not immigrate here. We were slaves. We were brought here. It's completely different. And many of us have post-slavery trauma that's handed down from our parents, our grandparents, and our great-grandparents from their time having served under white people and being told that they were less than, that they were three-fifths of a human and weren't good enough to be able to walk into facilities that white people owned and where white people were through front doors and had to go around back and had to stay at our own hotels. That's if we were lucky if there were hotels to stay at in the first place. I want you to understand something. To pathologize our pain and sit up here and say that this is an example of black folks, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. White folks are going to perpetrate that this is what's going on, but it's not really what's going on because we know the truth. All right, we know the truth. And through the examples of our pain that we talk about this week with Dr. Lewis Gordon, the examples of our pain that we talk about this week, just yesterday's show with the hoaxes, where we are willing to do things in instances just to get the attention on the fact that racism exists because people pretend as if it doesn't, just like they pretended as if these text messages in this case don't exist when they hug this woman, the judge, and this 18-year-old boy, this child. He's essentially a child, all right, after his brother dies. He's just trying to feel better. I think he'll look back on this and maybe feel differently, but maybe not. As an immigrant, his story is not the same as mine. I wouldn't hug this woman. I wouldn't do, do those things. But we take our eye off the ball when we forget that these white folks would put us in cages and have our asses, as Joe Biden says, in chains. And that is exactly who this woman is. And that goes to those text messages that Dr. Lewis Gordon talks about that are indicative of racism. When is this over? When Martin Luther King is dead again? When she's with black colleagues and wants a way out and she says, I'm not racist, but... In other words, these people are subhuman. I don't want to be around them. And then when a dog is racist and she says, well, I am too. 
That lets you know what Dr. Lewis Gordon says earlier this week and says, hey, you know what? These folks will tell you that you're not human and your reaction should never be, I am just like you because you don't want to be just like this woman that's going to jail even for the short time that she's going. You don't want to be in a situation where you're pushed psycho analytically into a, 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 a suit where you're trying to prove that you're the perfect human because neither of us are perfect. None of us are. And so then we create our own way, Dr. Lewis Gordon argues. What I'm saying, simply put, is this. Do not allow white people to make you believe that what you're seeing in Dallas is indicative of you. Because it's not. Because many of you are not immigrants. Many of you are descendants of slaves. It is completely different from us. And many of you are religious, but you ain't that religious where you're going to go turn the other cheek, especially if you're listening to me, most of you, where you are going to be like, oh, I'm going to hug this woman in court after she kills my brother, after she, she killed my brother in cold blood while he is in his room. That's not indicative of you. That's indicative of these people and these immigrants and these Christians that would these diehard Christians that would do this that believe that everything that's in that book is something that should be applicable to our former white masters and white oppressors. I don't think many of you believe that at all. You have nothing in common with these two people as insane as they are and they are insane. I want you to believe that and understand that. There is nothing wrong with you. There is something wrong with them. And for different reasons for that matter, they come from different points in the universe and never shall the two meet with you. Thanks again for listening to Ready News Review Unrestricted's podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe right underneath my picture right here on YouTube to this channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Click away, click away, click away. And you can also find me on Twitter at Rob Redding. That's at Rob Redding on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook at Rob Redding. That's forward slash Redding News Review. You can find me on Snapchat as well, Rob Redding. And you can find me on Instagram, Robert Redding, simply on Instagram, Robert Redding, on LinkedIn, and of course, most other social media. But make sure you subscribe on this YouTube. Hit subscribe to get all the pressing news that you need to know. And keep coming to ReadingNewsReview.com for all of the pressing news you need to know and to subscribe to Reading News Review 